All right, today we're going to overhaul a carburetor on a 12 horsepower overhead valve Briggs and Stratton engine. The problem is it's backfiring through the carburetor. The engine sat for three years and I'm sure a bunch of varnish and possibly dirt has accumulated in the carburetor. I took it off once and uh, cleaned it up and got it running. Uh, but that then it started backfiring so that wasn't enough so now I'm gonna have to do a overhaul again only this time I'm gonna have to soak it uh, take the jets out and make sure that they're not obstructed so I have two bolts on this side they do not have to be completely removed two torques on this side again they don't have to be completely removed Take the air filter cover off. Now comes the real fun part is uh, disconnecting the linkages and the springs without damaging them. Uh, you want to be real careful here. Um, I like to disconnect the springs and then uh, unbolt the carburetor and disconnect the linkage by moving the carburetor about. Disconnect this one little spring right here, which is actually kind of painful to disconnect here. It's all wrapped around. And I like to disconnect this one. It's very fragile. Don't want to bend it too much. And I'm going to unbolt it here to remove the linkage. All right, next is the fuel line. Take the carburetor off. And first, the throat comes off, and then the carburetor actually unbolts. All right, carburetor off, and we'll get these uh, pieces out of here. And out it comes. All right, so now we'll block up the uh, carburetor here. We'll make sure that the uh, choke is closed and just kind of clamp it in the vise with my soft jaws here. We'll clamp that down and remove the bolt. Now with these screws, they're they're pretty soft, and sometimes the Phillips doesn't work well, but they are. Um, They are slotted, so you want to get a very good screwdriver that fits it very well, that's slotted, so you can get a good grip on it and break it loose. And we'll lift the bowl right off. So what I see is a lot of dirt and debris inside the uh, pickup tube where the jets are. I didn't clean it very well, apparently. And I also see this O-ring here is kind of crushed and damaged, so I'm going to remove this dump it in the soaker. So I just bought this gallon can of parts cleaner that I'm going to soak it in. It says it's a complete kit with a parts basket. So, so I'll just take my paint key and open it up. And there is a parts basket in here. A little bit thicker than I thought it would be. So I'll just put my carburetor in and let it start soaking. So it said to soak it for 20 minutes, which I did. And I uh, see uh, that it, a lot of it came clean. I'm still going to uh, spray it out. And I'm going to uh, check these jets. Make sure all the holes are clear here in the uh, idle jet and the main jet. So just kind of clean up, make sure there's no visible dirt anywhere. Getting all the nooks and crannies. 
put it back together see if I took care of that backfiring so every carburetor I've ever taken apart and the engine ran well afterwards <laughs> uh, it was the idle jet so in this case on the float body the float cover I guess I should say is the idle jet is seated right here in the middle you can either spray it out or you can poke it out uh, if you poke it out you'll notice there's a gasket on there and then you can use your carburetor cleaner to spray out the hole and if you see on this end there's a little indent you can put your little nozzle in there and spray it out so let's do that you can see how it mists as it comes out nice and clean uh, the standard rule is do not um, put any wires or any drill bits or anything in that hole to clear it out with the idea being that you do not want to enlarge it so then you just get it back in here you re realign it reseat it and you'll be good to go as soon as I get it lined up which I can't do for the camera there it is back in place there's your needle for your float it stops the gas from coming in from the fuel line into the carburetor uh, and then it allows the fuel to come in from the gas line to the carburetor so you want to make sure that's nice and clean and correct some of them are coated if they have a rubber coating you don't want to take that off so you want to be careful what you're cleaning you may think you're cleaning dirt off of there and what you're doing is you're taking the, the coating off of it so be real careful with that and some overhaul kits just give you a new needle and you can just throw your old one away so to reassemble you put your needle onto the float put the float and needle down onto the float retainer put your pin in and that's all there is to it So what you want to see is these two small holes back here they go all the way down to here you want to make sure those are clean and then this piece right in the back here that's just a post but these are through holes make sure you don't neglect any through holes well I started cleaning before I filmed it but one of those through holes was clogged up because they sit down in one of these grooves here the two holes and they weren't picking anything up they were clogged up so the idle jet had some debris in it and those through hole posts also had some debris in it so we'll just clean that up so I decided I didn't like the look of that gasket and I wanted to just get a carburetor gasket kit if you will it's not really a carburetor overhaul kit but I wanted to replace that gasket and of course you know the kit will come with this uh, funny looking one and then the o-ring gasket and this is what I found out that in order to receive this part here you do not care about what kind of lawnmower it is you don't care whether it's a snapper or John Deere or any other brand Troy built none of them what you care about is the engine and in this case it's uh, Briggs and Stratton so in the case of a Briggs and Stratton engine in order to get this part you need to know the engine number and on your overhead valve engine is going to be located on the rocker arm cover plate and there's going to be three numbers and you're going to need all three model type and code number so uh, be careful of I's and ones and O's and zeros uh, get some steel wool and uh, brighten it up 
to clean it off with. That's what I did. And then you can go down to the local shop or wherever you get your parts from and order them. So we'll just replace these gaskets here. I'll leave the float assembly assembled. And the two gaskets, or should I say the O-ring and the gasket that I want to replace, go on the float bowl housing or cover or whatever you want to call it. This O-ring here goes on this piece. It's where the gas line comes in and dumps into the float bowl. So the best way I found to reassemble it is this piece right here. You press it into the groove and this piece up here you press it into the groove and that'll kind of hold it in place. This O-ring you just kind of seat it all the way down. Then you're going to match up your carburetor body to fit in there. And then you just make sure that is secure all the way around. Once that's secure, you can take your float bowl and line that up. And that should go flush all the way down. Just hold a little pressure on it because the gaskets need to be compressed just ever so slightly. Now as far as getting your orientation correctly, if you lose orientation, how does it go back on the motor? Well, you know that your fuel line is going to be facing out, not towards the motor. So that'll get you, keep you straight there. I've got some background noise, got some construction going on here and uh, at the house. so. While that's going on, I'll just uh, reassemble the carburetor. Just get these uh, studs started. And then we'll mount the carburetor on. And we'll put the two hookups, the two wire controls, the uh, choke control and the throttle, butterfly throttle control. I'll hook those up before I mount the carburetor. All right, my advice to you, if you don't remember how things go back together, take a picture ahead of time. Take a picture before you disassemble it of the linkage at both ends, and that way you don't have to remember it. You don't have to take the time to draw it out. You can just hook everything up. Like I said, I like to put this stuff up before I mount the carburetor. It just makes life easier. Get your angles that you need to get started here. For the one spring, in order to take the stress off, I'll, I'll move the uh, I'll move the spring out. I'll extend it and then pinch it with my other hand. I'll just pinch it in place so that it's extended beyond the point that I need it to be. Then I'll take my needle nose pliers here to get it started in the hole. And that way I'm not pulling it with the pliers and bending it and mutilating it and ruining it. So for the other spring, which returns the choke to open, uh, I just unhooked the other end and clipped it on and then reconnected the end. And tighten it down. Just start the reassembly, put everything back together. All right, we're ready to start the engine, and remember it's idle that is the main thing. If it idles well, then we've done a very good job. As far as running at full speed, that's not so important. Well, 
it's idling very nicely. I would say that was a successful carburetor overhaul.